Here we are again in the yurt, our yom sweet yom, sitting in my rocker. Grab your cuppa and let's get started. Welcome back to our yurt on the mountainside. The last time we recorded there was an early spring snow. Now, spring has sprung. I am excited to tell you all about the happenings in my crofty side of life. I've been busy as a designer. Those words still sound strange rolling off my tongue, but it's true. And I'll share that later on in our video. I'm naming this 57th episode Aliens and Wildlife. I hope you've poured yourself a cuppa and are settled comfortably. You will see here some of the wildlife that we've had come close to the yurt, and I'll tell you the tale of the aliens a little later. Those are a bunch of coyotes down there. You can hear them, but you can't see them. You never see them, they're so smart. Sounds like they're maybe 70, 80 yards down the hill. Beautiful night in the Smoky Mountains.
They're down there. Wish I could see them. So now you've figured out why I'm calling it aliens and wildlife. Coyotes and an owl, and those are sounds we hear all the time. But then the next day I stepped outside to shake some rugs and I heard something uh, moving on the mountain and I knew it was a pretty good size. And by the time I walked around to the front of the yurt and looked up the lane, I saw two turkeys walking up there, up the road. So when I'm not watching the wildlife, I like to keep up with some of my favorite podcasters. I was watching Isabel Page here, and I also like to watch The Cottage Fairy, and um, of course, my if I ever need a good laugh, I always tune into The Naughty Knitwits with Leslie and Michelle, and um, yeah, I knit and croft and keep myself busy. This is my blueberry bush, a gift from my mom, actually a gift from her friend, but my mom babied it for me for a couple of years until I was settled up here. See the blueberries coming on? And so I transplanted it last fall, and it looks like I'm going to have some blueberries.
Urgh, my nemesis. I was going to plant um, some zinnia seeds there, but now I may have to find a different spot. He's rolling around in my mushroom compost. And for those of you who asked me to record the rain hitting the roof of the yurt, this is for you. This was a nice spring rain and boy was it loud. This is episode 57 of the Ruby Moss Cottage Yurt Cast. I'm Joyce. Welcome. Make yourself at home. Grab a cuppa and let's spend some time together. Oh, isn't spring wonderful? I am so enjoying all the flowers, all the birds, all the green. And as you know, I am a winter girl. So... Saying goodbye to winter was a bittersweet, but you know, spring just, she just entices you and woos you to where you almost forget about winter for a little bit. We have uh, shut down the fireplace and, or the wood burning stove. I've got plants all over it now for the next few seasons. And yeah, I've been spending a lot of time outside I've actually been spending a lot of time inside because I've been knitting so much. But what have I been doing? Oh, I've had some other fun things that we've been doing. So I think when I left off, we were going to go to Charlotte um, to visit with the family, spend Easter. And then we had like an impromptu family kind of shower with bringing the two families together. As you know, my daughter's getting married in a couple of weeks. So they brought both families together and just the, just the immediate family and we just threw an impromptu shower or I didn't throw it they the the mother of the groom I guess threw it but um so we all went to their house and I gave my daughter or our daughter the quilt that I had made oh, I'm gonna pop some video in here and I'm just gonna let you watch how she reacted. That's a really pretty card. Too. <laughs> He's like, you're kind of funny. Can you just look at Amelia? He's like, you're like, you're smile. He's just like, it's yeah, yeah, so good. Job put you on with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just got yeah. It just got like wet and soggy and fell off. Oh, oh go. my goodness. What? What? What happened? What happened? Oh my. What? Oh, 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 look at that's that. so pretty. Ooh. 
make that? Oh my that? gosh, I love that. Wow. Oh, maybe. Oh, I didn't see the heart. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, wow, gorgeous. Nice. Who made it? Someone made it? Uh, Here, do you mean to hold it up so you can see it? Taylor, did you see the heart on the inside of it? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's inside. Oh, my gosh, look at that. Oh, I love it. That's so pretty. Oh, Thank you. Oh, 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 I'm going to look at it. Courtney. Oh, oh that's so cute. Oh, oh, that is so Thank pretty. you. Thank you. I love that. What's it say? Oh, oh that is so cool. Heart here. Oh. What does it say? You can't just do it. Happy ever after, Ted, Adrian, Natalie, and Amelia. Now, how long does it take you to uh, make something like that, Joyce? Thank you. You're welcome. That's it, Ted. Just wad it up. Lily's coming to the rescue. She's like, can I help you fold that? That is absolutely This is why we need you around the whole week. You're that welcome. Love I loved every minute. I thought those, that just looks like you. And she yeah, showed me, I was like, that I looks really so much like her. Yeah. That was so precious. She loved it. Saw a few tears there at the end uh, when she read the embroidery. But, oh, that was such a good time together. The Grandies were playing in the pool, having fun. And, um, oh, it was a great family time. And then we had Easter the very next day. And that was fun. And um, so I'm trying to think what else we have done. Um, I wanted to tell you about the quilt. I've got notes here. So forgive me for looking down um, because... I want to make sure that all the other video that I've taken gets popped in here. But yeah, I wanted to catch you up with the quilt because you've walked the journey with me as I've sewn it. And yes, it has been gifted and she is very happy. So welcome. Let me just stop, pause and say welcome to everyone. Whether you're a newbie, whether you're a, a, a faithful follower, thank you for tuning in yet for another episode of the Ruby Moss Cottage Yurt Cast. Todd is not here today, so I, and, and unfortunately, we videoed very little of him this time, so it's just me. I think in the promo, you got a little bit of him when he was videoing the coyotes, but um, no, cooking, no cooking with Todd today in this episode, so the men can tune out, um, but yeah, he's not here, and so it's just me, and um, so welcome. And typically, you will get a little bit of my husband. If you're new, you get a little bit of my husband and a whole lot of me. But we uh, live in a yurt up in the Great Smoky Mountains, high up. And um, just simple living. So it's just a lifestyle podcast. Uh, but mainly about my crafting, my making, my book. But, a, but some woven in some of our lifestyle of what we're doing up here. Let me say... Um, Thank you, a big thank you to everyone who has supported me through Buy Me A Coffee. I am so grateful for that. You cannot believe how that encourages me. And so if you're wondering what I'm talking about, in the show notes below, there's a little arrow underneath the video. You, you click that and the show notes will pop down and there's a link to Buy Me A Coffee. And you can click that link and you can go on just as your way of saying thank you for sharing your life, for being an introvert that opens up her home to uh, others is not always easy, but um, that is inspiring. So thank you so much. And I also wanted to say, I've not really told you all about uh, the membership on there. So if you click the membership, then you don't have to go in there and click every, every podcast or every um, show. It will automatically, you'll be a member. And so once a month, every month, it will um, just take the, the money from your account and that'll be your way of saying thank you and you don't have to remember it. And for my members, what they get is they get a copy of my patterns. Um, and I'll get into that more in a little while. I am now a sock designer. So all of my patterns will be free to my, to the membership on there. And, um, you will get other bits and pieces of our life that I will put in there. 
I have not posted as much on there recently because I've been so busy in the throes of sock design that I haven't been on Instagram much. I haven't been posting on Buy Me A Coffee much. I really haven't been doing much of anything other than finishing up the sock designs. Today, I wrapped everything up with the big bow on it and it's done. Wow. Wow. So now I get to knit them more for fun. Um, I'm going to cast on another pair and I'll, sh I'll share that with you in a little while. But I did want to say thank you so much to everyone that has supported me through Buy Me A Coffee. And I just also wanted to let you know, and I don't, you know, I've never mentioned the membership, but there is an option on there for membership if you're interested in that. So, I am about to go off for a couple of weeks uh, for we have the wedding coming up and I'm going to go help my mom for a few days and my mom is doing great. Thank you everyone for asking. She is recovering from her knee surgery a knee replacement. She's 84 and doing quite well. She wasn't eating and so she started to regress. And so now she's getting her strength back because they've taken her off the medicine that was taking her appetite away. And she's getting a little stronger and getting a little better. She, I don't know that she's going to get to go to the wedding because of the recovery, but she is doing really great. And speaking of my mother, remember on my last episode, I told you guys about how, you know, like I go into her house, everything is so minimalistic and so pristine and clean. And now, as you can tell, I'm not a minimalist. I collect what I love and I display what I love. Plus, living in a yurt, you just have everything out on display. But my mom and I are just total opposites. And I told you about a bird's nest that was on her back porch that my sister had seen when she was there. Well, here is the uh, saga of the bird's nest. What are you taking a picture? Okay, Sharon, we're at my mom's, and you said that the bird net, the bird's nest was up there somewhere. Yes, yes, right in like, the corner, right of the, up in there. Yeah, right. That's exactly. And, and it was beautiful. And now it it's gone. Fully, the full nest was there. There were hangings of the nest. Some of the mm. straw drooping down in the greenery. And it now, was breathtaking. Oh. And now it's gone. Yep. And now, now it's gone. You could cry. <laughs> Mom, what did you do with the bird's nest? The mother took it. Mother, what did you do with the bird's nest? Confess. <laughs> Tell us. Did you climb a ladder? Mm -mm. <gasps> Are oh, you lying? Mm -mm. No, I didn't climb Did ladder. you get a broom? <gasps> Mother. Well, what would you rather me do? Well, I, would I would rather you leave get... the bird's nest. She said she felt bad, but she hated the mess. Mm. Put Mother, that, put that why are you so cleanly? Put the phone away. You're making me nervous. <laughs> Tell me. She's got a little red solo cup there. I wonder what's in it. <laughs> hmm. we what want, are you drinking, We want to know what's in your red solo cup. Will you girls make a be dry, make, what is it? Dry me to drink. <laughs> It's your fault. <laughs> I never dreamed of her do it. I didn't. I want her to put that thing away. She you don't know what she's doing right now. Oh. <laughs> so we have to be really good. I am not a bit surprised. Truly, truly expected that. And yes, I do believe we're driving my mother to drink, but we had such fun with her out out on the back porch that day, out on her back patio. She can be so funny and just so loving. Her heart is so full. And us three girls just really cherished our time together with her. And she loves watching her three girls together. Although I do think uh, Sharon and I get to be a bit much. Uh, Debbie is the calmer of the two, but, but she can get fired up too. So, uh, but yeah, mom said she really enjoyed that afternoon. That was the day before her surgery. So we kind of took her mind off of the surgery and, or two days before her surgery, we kind of took her mind off of her surgery and she got to laugh and have fun with us. So the joys of sisters. Ah, I love it. They're the best. Okay. I've talked a lot about, um, my sock knitting. And I have alluded to the fact that uh, before that a big name designer had contacted me and asked me if I would design some socks for them. 
And I said, yes. So that is what I did. I designed two pair of socks for them. And I am not going to mention the name yet, just simply because they have not launched their sock yarn. And I don't want to get ahead of the, uh, the story. It is their story to tell. I just happen to be a part of it. However, it is up to me to promote my patterns in my in the yarns that I choose. I knit for them in their yarns, sent that off. They have those. But I then, I have rights to the pattern there. It is my pattern. I own them. So I then knit the same socks in my yarn. And so I am finished. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen them. But I'm going to show you. The first pair I did was called Serendipity. And <clears throat> this is my serendipity socks. Little pink kisses on the end. But I'm just such a colorful girl. I needed color. And so I had this and this. I actually, I was gonna say were in my stash, but they really weren't. I went to what I guess is my local yarn shop um, and bought these uh, two, two skeins. And then this I had in my stash, and that is, I'm going to put it over, maybe you can see it a little bit better. It's yarn that was in my stash by uh, Karen of Modovic, Create, Modovic Yarns. Um, she's in Norway, and she and I used to uh, communicate. I haven't seen you on, I don't even know if you still watch my podcast. I haven't seen you on Instagram for a while, but this is her yarn. And then I think this was in my stash and this was in my stash. Just minis I had in my stash. I like wonky toes. I like, I prefer when I knit socks just to have a great big chunk of yarn for, for my toes. I don't know. I just, I just like the look. I just, I don't know. Just kind of bohemian outside of the box thinking. So this, and I'll try to, it has a, like a panel rib there. And, um, it is just a fun, intuitive knit, and it's on for, it is for sale on Ravelry. I have a Ravelry shop. I will put the link in the show notes, but it the shop is um, Joyce Fetty Designs, and then the socks, if you just want to put in for under the patterns, the search would be um, Serendipity Socks. So that is my very first design. Now, what I had in mind with this and future, some future, not all of my designs, but a big chunk of my designs is we live in the mountains. We go hiking a lot. There's the Appalachian Trail. There's all kinds of trails around. And so Todd and I love to go out on the weekends and just hike them, do day hikes, sometimes a couple hour hikes. Sometimes it takes all day. And I want a line of socks that kind of just pop outside or over top of the um, hiking boots. So that was the theme for this, and that's why I made the legs a little longer. I'll try to put a photo in here of me uh, having my hiking boots on with these, but that was the theme for that. And so I plan to do some more fun ones um, to show like the, the top part of the socks that pop outside of the um, boots are going to have some fun designs to them. So that, be looking for that um, in some of my future designs. I'm not going to be designing for the next few weeks because I'm going to be having some fun family time. But they will be coming out later this summer, early summer hopefully. So that is my very first design, Serendipity. And like I say, that's on Ravelry. My second pair, and they're not on sock blockers, but that's okay. They're shorty socks. You know what I'll do? I'll take one pair off here and put it on so you can at least see the shape of it. These are called Hearts Afoot, my Hearts Afoot socks. And they're little shorties with this uh, roughly pom-pom edge kind of look. And again, some wonky toes. These are called hearts of foot because on the top of the foot is, I'll just do it this way. You can see the heart, the heart shape at the top of the foot. Easy peasy pattern. These knit up so fast. They fly off of your needles. I knit this using, it was stash yarn as well, but years ago I, um, 
joined Molly from a homespun house, her Harry Potter sock club. And so this, this and this was a uh, part of the Harry Potter sock club. And then this is just something I had in my stash that I added with it. But isn't that a beautiful yarn? Molly's yarns are absolutely stunning. This is so soft. I'm just really, really enjoyed it. The heel is a quick heel. The, um, cut, everything about this is just fast. So if you want a little cute shorty pair of socks, this is a great fun knit. I'm getting ready to cast on another pair and, um, I'm going to pull the yarns today and I'm going to throw them in my knitting bag that I'm taking on my trip so that I can work on those while, um, while I'm away. But that is these two socks, the Serendipity and the Hearts of Foot socks are both on Ravelry. And I'm quite proud of them. I, they just were so fun to knit and challenging. Yeah, being a sock designer was challenging at first. And probably the most challenging part to all of it was um, the technical part. Uh, the knitting, you know, that's easy for me. I can, I'm pretty creative. I can come up with some ideas, but the um, technology, it slowed me down. I was up to 2.30 in the morning last night because a friend of mine, and you know who you are, she messaged me and said, well, I wanted to go on and look at your patterns, but I can't, they won't let me buy it. it so I had to go on and figure out what in the world I had done wrong. And yeah, so I think she she probably texted me around 9 or 9.30, um, and 2.30 in the morning, I was finished. So I'm a little bit tired. But do we just want to stare for a while? Wow. So yeah, those are done. That is the only thing, as you can imagine, I have out, out of my bags. Okay, I've got a hair here again. It's not the only thing, because if you can imagine, I've done that twice. So not only did I knit this pair in my yarn, I knit a pair in the company's yarn. Not only did I knit this in my yarn, I knit a pair in the company's yarn. So I knit four socks in what, three weeks? Four individual sock, a sock. Four pair of socks. Two and two. But in this two was four. And in this two was eight, four. So that's eight, eight individual socks, four pairs of socks. Are we confused yet? I've knit a lot of socks. How about that? Oh! Well, now that we're done with sock knitting, what else have I been doing? You know what? What I'm going to do, see this bag. I love this bag. It's one of my favorites. It's from Julie of Button Jar Studios. I have two of them. I have, this is the larger one and I have a small one. Or is this the small one and I have a larger one? Anyway, I have two of them. And so I am wanting to knit a shawl for the wedding. And I'm going to do the Sweet November again because it's so fast, so easy. And I'm going to knit it in these two colors. And this is a Stellina to it. You can see the sparkle there. And um, I'm going to run this with it. I just think it would soften it and make it just look really pretty for the wedding. If you don't haven't seen my Sweet November shawls before, mm, this is really... This is what it looks like. And it's a free pattern. I don't know that I'm going to put fringe on it. I I might put little fringes. I, I don't know. I haven't even gotten that far into the process of thinking about it because I've been ex obsessed with. So I've got that packed and ready to go. And then I'm going to throw in some sock yarn. And that's what I'm going to be working on for the next couple of days, um, weeks. So maybe by the time I podcast again, I will have shawl and another pair of shorty socks to show you. Maybe even a new design. Who knows? So that is it as far as knitting. I haven't been crocheting. I haven't been doing any other kind of needlework. 
but I have been doing a lot of painting. And so whenever I just couldn't do sock knitting anymore, I would go over to my um, easel and I would work on my paint by number. I have not picked it up for quite some time, but I have been so enjoying it. So I'm gonna show you how far along I am now. This is how far I am. Uh, back up, see? I am having fun, I'm almost finished. So I will um, get this finished and I'm already looking for um, a new one. I think I found a new one that I want to do next, but this is so pretty. I do painting like I do knitting. It seems like I I get this project in front of me, like this paint by number is just a clean blade, clean slate, you know, bunch of numbers on it. And you don't know where to start and it's so intimidating and you don't really even want to start because you've just got all of these little itty bitty tiny numbers everywhere on a piece of paper or a mat. And so you just randomly pick one. You always start with the dark colors first and, and the light colors last. Because if you started out with white, you when you went in to do dark, you wouldn't know where the lines were and you you go over top of the white. So that the light colors have to be last. So you start with your dark color and sometimes I'll start like up in the left hand corner and just kind of work my way out. But this time, or sometimes I'll do like it this time. This time I just started with the birdhouse because I wanted the main object to pop. And you just work and you paint and you paint and you paint and you paint. And it seems like you're getting nowhere. And then all of a sudden the painting comes alive. And before you know it, you're 75% done and then you just want to slow the process down. You're just, I am not ready to be done with you. I've bonded with you at this time. This is fun. I just want this to keep going on and going on and going on. And maybe part of it is because you know, okay, when this is done, I'm going to start another one. And then I've got that blank slate again that I've got to start with. But it's kind of a lot. Well, I would say it's a lot like that with knitting. But sometimes knitting, I'm really excited to get into it. And then it's a big project. And then I kind of lull. And then I get 75% done. And it's like, oh, I'm not ready for this to be done. So knitting and painting, a, a bit a bit alike. So I've been doing that painting. Um, I haven't been sewing anymore. I was going to start another quilt. And I still want to do that. But I just have not had the time. But I did decide, I pulled this fabric out. And it's a jersey knit. I thought it was so cute. And I've got tons of it. I, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of it, but I am going to make a, a gown and I ordered this pattern off of Etsy. So I'm going to, or, I'm going to make this nightgown and I probably have enough fabric here to make this and the, and maybe even those pajamas, but that's a vintage pattern that I bought on Etsy. And I'll have to share her Etsy name in the show notes because I don't remember what it was, but her service was like, bam. Like I ordered it, goodness. I mean, I got it within the same week. It was crazy fast, her delivery. So I appreciate good customer service. So I'll give her a shout out in the show notes. And yeah, maybe by the time I record again, I will have these pajamas made and maybe I'll wear them. So that, look for that off of the sewing machine. I think that's it. I'm reading, as far as my book bag, I'm reading Lilac Girls. I do not know who the author is, but it's a World War II uh, genre, and I, which is my favorite. And um, so, yeah, I'm really like, and she's just tying the characters together now. There's a girl in Poland, there's a girl in the U.S., and there's a girl... In France, maybe. But so she's tying the characters characters together, and I'm really, really enjoying that. I don't think I've read anything else, um, because I really haven't had the time for all of that. Oh, one other thing I have made, and I'm gonna pop some pictures in here. But I made this window treatment for my front door. It's um, just a, a fat quarter from that I had a big stack of. And so I just sewed them together. I made these cute little, this cute little window treatment for my front door, and I'm really enjoying it. Up here, I rare, you know, we just don't pull the 
the drapes, or <laughs> those aren't considered drapes. Okay, so up here, you don't even have to worry about your windows being open because there's no one up here, and the people that are up here are far enough away, and they're not coming down here or down our down our lane. So, um, it's mainly for looks. It's really not for privacy, but, um, yeah, I had fun doing that. So, I guess I did make something else. I did that, and, um, that's it. I am pretty sure that is it. Today I have to hem the, ga the gown that I'm wearing to the wedding. I just have to hem it just a little bit. So I have to do that. Um, and I will be sure to make, take videos and share all of that with you all the next go around. We're just so happy for our daughter. She deserves this. Just let me say that. I need to tell you a little bit about something that happened to me. As you know, the, the podcast is called Aliens and Wildlife, and you saw all the wildlife. And oh my goodness, we've had a real show of it lately. As a matter of fact, I was sitting here this morning finishing up some computer work, and I heard something outside the yurt. I didn't even get up and look, but it, it sounded big. Um, I was thinking it's probably the turkeys out there because they seemed, it's so funny. Every time I go down the mountain, they're, they're just trotting around. I mean, and it seems to, it's, oh, the two. I, I can't believe coyotes haven't got them. But anyway, I think that's what it was. But I didn't even get up and look. By the time I was finishing what I did, they were gone. But Todd sometimes travels with his job. And the other night, he wasn't here. And it was 3 o'clock in the morning. And I woke up. And it was pitch black. And they're like, I have, it's dark up here anyway. Like, outside, if it's not a full moon or a lot of stars, it is really black out there. And I have string lights and some, a little night lighter. So it's never really pitch black in here. But I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, it was pitch black. So I pretty much knew, oh, the electricity had been out. And when I went to sleep, it had been storming. And so evidently the storm knocked the electricity out. So I got up and um, looked out the window. Now remember, I'm all alone. I looked out the window and there was lights blinking on and off and they were like a white light like in my mind I thought well that could be fireflies but it's too early in the year there there's no fireflies out now and it was just a little bigger light than fireflies and it would be like right up our lane and right down over the 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 side of the mountain from I was looking at my bedroom window and it was just like right there and then it would be up in the sky and then it would be in the trees. And I mean, it was, it was just bright. It looked like a bright nightlight about that size of a bulb just flashing here and there and here and there. So I'm all by myself. I have never seen anything like this before in my life. And I'm like, what in the world? So I got the cam, I got my camera trying to video it, but the camera light was reflecting off the window. So it just wouldn't, and I was not going outside to video. So I mean, just like, the longer I stared at it, the creepier it was. And I had no clue what it was. So I go and I get my my um, stun gun and I get my mace and I get back to bed. I didn't get the gun, thank goodness. I mean, you know, like I'm not gonna sleep with the gun, but I knew where it was and it was ready. And I had my stun gun and my mace and I'm laying in the bed and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what is out there? What is out there flashing? Are those aliens? I mean, like, those surely are not aliens and they've mistaken our yurt for the mothership. I know that's just, and, and so it's dark and I'm all alone and I'm thinking these weird flashing lights out there. And the more I think about it, the more my mind is thinking those are aliens and they think your yurt is the mothership. They think your yurt is the mothership. They think your yurt is the mothership. I'm sitting here holding my stun gun and my mace thinking those are aliens and they think my yurt is the mothership. They've mistaken my yurt as the mothership because they were everywhere and they were swarming towards, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking they're coming to the yurt. They think the yurt is the mothership. And so <laughs> I'm really, <laughs> I'm really not that crazy woman that thinks that aliens are here on this earth to, but you know, when you're alone and it's night and it's pitch black and you're seeing things that you've never seen before and you know, you're seeing them, you know, you're not imagining them. So I'm like, they're going, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I've got both of my, my stun gun and my mace. And so the next morning, 
five o'clock. So I'm laying there from three to five and I'm scared and I'm looking out the window every now and then just to see if the aliens are still out there and they are and they're blinking. And so I'm just like, so finally somewhere around five o'clock I fell asleep. And um, then when I woke up at 7.30, I text my sisters. I said, you guys, the weirdest thing happened last night. And I was telling them everything that happened. And so Sharon, the sister that you know, texts back and she said, well, it must be some kind of bug that just happens in the Smoky Mountains. And it, I'm just like, in my mind, just a, a little peeved. Like, no, your sister almost was attacked by aliens last night. And so it wasn't like two minutes later, she sends me a, a Google and says that Sure enough, in the Great Smoky Mountains, the fire, the male firefly, uh, that's his mating thing, and he only does it once a year. Okay, then I feel stupid. <laughs> By that time, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I wish I had never told anybody. But I was kind of glad I did tell him because I would forever thought I was the aliens were out there. And I had never heard of this firefly show that I watched. Um... And so then my other sister sends me another thing and it says that it does happen in the Great Smoky Mountains. Everybody comes or people come from all over to travel to see it. But it happens like end of May or in June. And I'm like, okay, well, this is, you know, earlier May. It couldn't be the same thing. And the pictures weren't lining up. It did show one of the flashing lights that I saw, but it was what she showed me was even prettier. And so then... I said, I don't know that that's what it was because this, it wasn't that exactly. So my other sister works with a hiker that comes up this way and hikes all the time. And she was telling her the story. Of course, she had to tell her about the aliens that I thought were aliens. And um, this lady hikes a lot. And she said, what I saw was something else. And it only happens once a year. And hikers hike into the mountains to see it. And it is, it's called the blue white something. And that what I saw only happens once a year. And it is the mating of a firefly. And I don't know, I don't know if they were, I don't know anything about it. I don't know if they're just saying, I don't know if it comes out a couple weeks before, ahead of the actual mating just to say, hey, I'm sending my vibes out there. You know, just want you to know in a couple weeks, something's going to be happening. But the good news is that my mountain is not invaded by aliens and they have not mistaken my yurt for the mothership. So all is well. I told, when I was telling Todd this, he said, well, what did you think you were going to do with the mace and the stun gun? And I said, well, I was going to, I was going to fight to the death. I mean, they were not going to just take me. I was going to fight them with all I had and they would have won because there were a legion of them. But I was at least going to do my best to to fight and fight them off. So, anyway, that is my story of what I thought. I was being invaded by the aliens. I should never have told that story. I may not be able to hold my head up again. But if my craziness can make you laugh or smile that I share openly. Buy me a coffee. I mean, that's kind of humiliating. <laughs> All right. Back to your making, back to your crafting, back to your lives. I hope you're enjoying spring or fall wherever you are. If you're enjoying fall, oh, exciting because winter is right around the corner. But if you're in, in the spring, enjoy Enjoy the birds, enjoy the flowers. Every time I go for a walk, I see a new wildflower. It, that, that's the way it'll be from now till July or August. Just like always something different sprouting up out there. And so I love it. All right, that's it. That's all I've got for you. I love you. I thank you. I appreciate all that you do, all of your encouragement towards me. Go check out my socks on my Ravelry shop. Buy me a coffee if you want to. And... I think that's all I've got for you. My Etsy shop is on vacation, hoping to have it back up. And the goal was June 1st. I, I put it on vacation so I could finish the socks. I'm not sure June 1st, but 
by mid-June, it'll be open and I'll have some new makes, vintage makes in there for you to check out. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for showing up here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for laughing with me. And just remember that all you do, take it one stitch at a time.